Hello, good evening everyone. Welcome to this very special edition of Formula Racing League TV. My name is Gogs Brown and I am here to bring to you the action from the finale of our of FRL's off-season events. That is, and I'm going, I apologise if I butcher this, that is La Grande Competizione Italiana at the circuit di Enzo e Dino Ferrari in Imola. And I do apologise again if I have completely butchered the motherland's language. But we are here for the final couple of minutes of free practice. Just to let you know what we have in store for this evening. It follows the British GT Championship format. So just to go through that there, we've got free practice. We've got another couple of minutes to go. We'll then have an all-round qualifying session. All drivers on the track for 15 minutes who can set the fastest time and secure pole position that will set the grid for the two races that we're going to have uh, two 40 minute sprint no, they're not sprint races they're two 40 minute feature races they both have a mandatory pit stop for fuel so all drivers will have to go into the pits to refuel at least once in each race the twist they will have a five minute pit window to do so. So the middle five minutes of the race, these guys will have to jump into the pits, put some fuel in. Tires, brand new tires are optional. That is an optional extra and that will cost the drivers an extra five seconds in the pits. So it's up to them to decide if that is then worth that delay in the pits to give themselves the advantage before and after their pit stop as they'll be able to push a little bit harder with the added grip. Another twist we have this evening is of course as you can see as we, uh, as we see Austell there getting out of shape at the top of the hill. One of the other things that we will be looking at this evening is the weather we'll keep our eyes on the radar it's looking extremely wet just now it's only going to get a little bit wetter the rain's going to come down heavier that will play into the driver's strategy there as well as we're currently watching Zarihev in the number eight porsche through the fatama rail shakim bounces over the curbs very nicely considering the weather conditions that's an amazing camera shot of that one. We see both himself and the BMW, the 314 car of Piscina behind. Current fastest lap is held by Mike Austell in the 227 Ferrari 147 6. We've also got Carl Sween there in P2, a couple of tents behind in Max Chirpa in the number 4 AMG Mercedes. Then in 4th and 5th place, Caruana and Piscina, both exactly the same lap time as time in the Aston Martin. So that's a little, surely we've got a car off track there, I think it's Variante Alta as they come through there. He's going to potentially block the BMW behind, hopefully he'll get out of the way. Alfie Hudson, thank you very much for joining on the track saying that he'll be fast enough to race here one day. Alfie, do not let that discourage you. By all means, do learn the tracks, learn which way they all go, but don't let that discourage you from joining our league. Very active and friendly Discord at Formula Racing League. Always happy to help any questions for newcomers, and of course they do tier a lot of their championships, so they can place you with drivers of similar pace as you get to grips with the game. Um, so you have a little look on the sim grid if you do change your mind you can have a look at all our FRL's championships there on simgrid.com okay so I'll be racing in the, league, in the F1 league as well I've had a shot there myself uh, totally different games completely understand the hesitation uh, I found the F1 very difficult switching from this to that as well so I can completely appreciate where you are coming from. So we've got three minutes left this evening. The reason why we are bringing this race to you is 
but I was supposed to be taking part in this race, currently sitting 7th in the championship, potential contender for the top 3 however, after about 3 seasons of continually cleaning my wheels, pedals, my lovely Logitech pedals, uh, they finally decided to succumb to their injuries and they no longer work as they should. So, the plus side is FRL gets me in the commentary box for the final off-season event we have for ACC uh, on console. That's cross-play, the first ever cross-play season on console, PS5 and Xbox will be taking part starting the 4th of April on Thursday night with our late night Thursday series. Then on the Sunday after that, that is what, the 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th of April, we'll see the return of Super Sprint Sunday on FRL YouTube as well. And then on the 9th of April, Tuesday the 9th, the one everybody wants to win, Tackle Tuesday returns. All these championships are available on the SimGrid.com. Alan Brown in the chat saying hello there. Hello there indeed. I assume that was an impression of Obi-Wan Kenobi. That's Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, in the chat there. Thank you very much for joining us. I hope we can bring the action that you're enjoying this evening. Is Gedman racing tonight? Gedman is currently having a cigarette while driving. There he is in a brand new colour scheme, but still retaining his sky blue Porsche wheel that he gets in the way of somebody on their hot lap. That's what we like to see. So yes, Gedders is on track this evening. Uh, the rest of the admin team that we have participating, the FRL admin team this evening, we brought this all together. We've got Jack Prentice and the Aston Martin also currently sitting in his mint green baby. The Aston is back. So he's there. We've got Hutch, the silent admin, testing the Lamborghini this evening. You will regret that one, I believe, at the end of the regular season. Luke Prentice, great help getting everything sorted this evening. Bit of issues with our servers, but Luke was able to get on top of that one and get everything sorted. Thank you very much, Help Prentice. Uh, who else have we got racing this evening? I think that's it as far as the admin team goes. So we'll see, keep track of how they get on this evening as well. 28 seconds of practice remaining. Caruana is doing his best to break that deadlock there for P6. Very clo close looking grid this evening actually, from 3rd down to about 14th, separated by less than a second, considering the conditions out there. There is still a dry line, you can see on the final corner there is Caruana now, comes over the line, this is going to be his last lap. Alan Brown, thank you very much for the like. If you are liking this video this evening, of course, please do not forget to subscribe to get notified of all of Formula Racing League's live stream action, live racing action over the coming months because we've got one hell of a season to bring to you. We'll go over the season, the upcoming season, as the evening goes on as we tackle Imola at this festival of speed engines, torque and gasoline. There's Hutch now, two Lamborghinis together coming round the final two corners. This is going to be Hutchinson's last lap. He's going to get a little bit of a toe but the back end steps out on the very wet greasy kerb. And he's across the line now doesn't improve. Well he does improve, the line's a lot further ahead than we thought as Hutchinson goes up to P13. The checkered flag is obviously out and the last person around the track is going to be Piscina who is also going to try his best to break the deadlock with Caruana. Spanish Steve, he's gone wide, he's ran it over the curb there, the back end stepping out the rain coming down and he's going to take to the pits and that I think will be the end of the session. Gedman's going across the line.
did not set a valid time. So that's the Germain. A couple of more drivers out there. Jack Prentice in the mint green Aston Martin will recognise that car a mile this evening. Grey, dreary conditions, but a lovely mint green and baby pink. Aston Martin. How do you ruin the beauty of an Aston Martin? Just ask Jack Prentice. Green light. Go, go, go. So that's us now ready for the start of qualifying, and this is how the forecast is due to start this evening. We've got some drizzle just now, and it's just going to get heavier and heavier and heavier. A little bit of an anticlimactic qualifying, but that will mean the pressure is on these first couple of laps. I mean, it is going to get heavier. It is only a 15-minute qualifying session. Carl Sweens looks very racy throughout this entire championship, but that Porsche has a big weight. The engine in, of course, in the rear of the Porsche. And that will be swinging the back end around these corners. And with the reduced grip, you may see a couple of tank slappers on the Porsche this evening. However, the extra weight at the back really allows you to get the power down on the way out of Toza up the hill. And I'm definitely going to have to get a track guide up so I can get the names off the corners correct but I'm not going to sit here and call that the top of the hill all evening. This is down now into Variante Alka. Sweeney is going to be first out, then we've got Hellman's behind, Hedgman's behind in the 717 car and then we'll have the number 71 of Vandal Wall as Sween cuts takes a very interesting corner a liberating corner liberates that car from the apex through Valianti Bassa coming down the hill under the silly barn banner into the final two corners two 90 degree corners and let's jump on board with Sween as he attempts to tackle the Autodromo Enzo e Dino Ferrari. So he's now going up through the gears, letting the speed build very long straight to at Imola that is not quite a straight, the first turn. It's almost a break into the kink in the straight there into Tamborello Chocaine. Needs to be careful not to take too much curbs in these conditions. The back end did not step out through two. That will give him the best traction through turn three. Short straight now and then a making zone with a curve. Get the car turned in, keep it over to the left because the next corner of the Vierna Chicane comes up very quickly. You can run a little bit wide there, it's okay. The toes up hairpin. Be patient on the throttle, get a good exit because you'll lose all the time up this hill if you do not do that. Sweden still on for a good lap up the top of the hill now. Pick your braking point and get it turned down. A little bit of trail braking and patience again on the throttle given the conditions. One of the hardest corners on the entire calendar now. Variante Alta braking and cornering at the same time while well, keeping the back end in check in these heavy rain conditions but Sweden's got round there okay for his first lap into Variante Bassa now a very tight chicane cut as much of those yellow sausage curbs as you possibly can don't run too far wide because the reduced traction on the wet curbs will slow you down over this crest turn right and immediately on the brakes into the second to last turn a little bit of understeer there, but he does get it turned eventually the final corner now. It's all about your exit. The back end almost stepping away from Sween as he now ups through the gears. We just wait for him now to cross the line and set the first time. The target time this evening, 1.48.092. Vando Hedman comes through and Vando Wall just eclipses Sween. Now keep an eye on the tracker on the left hand side because you're going to see all of these times now begin to tumble as the drivers set their first qualifying laps off this evening. This is on with Jack King in the five, sorry, the 750 purple Ferrari as he comes through the start finish line now and goes into fourth position. That's a respectable lap. 
Jack Prentice just goes through up ahead, as does Nateza, both of them second, last and last as it stands just now. This is the Aston Martin off Tullock. We've seen Tullock go very well. So far as Caruana takes the provisional pole time from Van der Waal, 147.765. That might take some beating. Paul Trotman's about to come and cross the line on a valid lap just now in the McLaren. And Paul Trotman goes up into P11. Pessina was very fast in practice. Can they bring that performance through as he crosses the line now? Only a tenth behind Caruana. He's not too far behind. Mike Hostel looks quick as well and goes into P2. Less than half a tenth off a second off the pace. Very quick things being set now. We're going to try and focus on some of the drivers coming through that have not yet set a lap time. As Sween improves 147.4. Next across the line is going to be Dr. Serfi. Crosses the line, does improve, just edges ahead of Hellman's. Car 713, that is going to be Caruana coming across the line again. He does improve to within 55 milliseconds off Sween that is very close at the top now who have we got coming across the line just now it's the car 62 car coming to start a lap but they have in the Porsche the yellow and blue fallout Porsche comes across the line now into P6 that's a good lap that is a very good lap we've got a gaggle of cars coming over the line here now as Caldwell moves up into P13 lucky for some car 66 comes through and this Glinken takes 5th overall car 29's popped through there as well that is Chapman they've come and set a valid time now the rain is going to begin to get a little bit heavier within the next couple of minutes and the question is, will we see any further improvements? Sween currently sits on the provisional pole position. Crosses the line now. Doesn't improve. Sharp's now going to come across the line in that Lamborghini. Sets a valid lap time. He needs to get himself on the board and he did so. That was what he needed at the time. Who have we got next? Car 215, Serpentine. Dr. Surfy comes through again, not able to improve. Have we now hit the invisible wall? Jack Kings must have put in an incredible lap. He's only 0.13 seconds off the back of Sween. He may get a small toe from Hutchinson in front of him. Doesn't improve this time around. Hutchinson's only a second down, but in P12. P13 now, so 13 places only separated by a second. That is very, very, very close. Car 34 is coming across the line. That's Popisil. Popisil just went fastest by three tenths off a second. C incredible lap by the McLaren driver. So car 314 next across the line, that is Piscina. It's currently 7 tenths of a second off Popisol's incredible lap that we've just seen. Not able to improve, so the rain is maybe now falling a little bit harder. Luke Prentice comes across the line and just manages to get himself up into P6. A little bit of a queue now forming actually uh, for Hutchinson. He's in the middle of some cars who have not yet set a valid lap time, I think. So Sproston and 269's not went out yet. 
Masherpa in the number four car and get Chris Gedman still yet to set a valid lapping. On board with the Porsche driver now, gets the curb on the, in on the entrance, and that's went too fast. That is not WRC, you're watching a settled course by Competizione. As Chris Gedman takes the Monte Carlo rally line, he's so far wide there, he's almost in Milan. Dr. Serfi is currently sitting in the pitch as we watch Hutchinson, amazing camera angle on the exit of the Tamborello chicane. Coming through the view of chicane, we've got 4 minutes and 40 seconds off this qualifying session. Remaining this wet qualifying session. Now Piscina coming round the final corner. He's going up through the gears. Keeps it over to the right hand side, minimises, he's very clever there, he minimises exactly how much distance he has to drive and it does benefit him, he moves up into P8 as Caruana has went faster again, just eclipsing Popisol's lap time with a 146.980. We'll keep an eye on these two as Popisol's just, I think, got past Chris Gedman. He does have another car just sitting in front of him, that's Zadihev. As he's went wide, Popaso has. Is it now getting a little bit more too wet? Has the coefficient of friction dropped? Are ah, these guys now aquaplaning in certain corners where they don't want to be? Car 66, that's Glinkin, just went off up ahead off this pack of cars. He's now returned to the pit lane. Car 79's had a spin on the exit of Variante Bassa. That is Gedman. Popisov's not on a valid lap, but Caruana might be. It looks like he's tiptoeing around. Now, having all the cars on track, oh, car 43's went wide at Variante Alta. Car 43 is. That's Luke Prentice. He's going to win wide. Car 237. They're all losing grip. They're all now struggling to keep the car in between the track limits as the conditions deteriorate further. But it is Caruana who's timed it absolutely perfectly. 22 milliseconds separate Caruana and Popisol. With Tullock with a great lap in the Aston Martin in P3. Carl Sween, the original pole setter, sets the exact same time as Glinken. Sween ahead, of course, as he set the lap time first. Two minutes left, just over two minutes left. We may get a couple of more laps in as Caruana fails to improve this time around. Serpentine is currently in P16. Serpentine, of course, signed up to the new main series of Formula Racing League on console. First ever regular season on cross play with PlayStation 5 and Xbox drivers on the same track at the same time. Credit to Kunos and 505 and Untold Games for getting all that set up ready for us and credit, all, credit also to SimGrid for being able to organise all that your very home of sim racing and of course Formula Racing League sim racing at its very best Serpentine, Vandal, Wall two of the drivers there on track 16th and 17th currently both signed up to the regular season if you do want to take part have a look on the simgrid.com and have a look, see what is and places are available. There are some places left. So Matthias Dibrail in the Bentley, the big old Bentley. The green and black yacht is back. Is that, is that a Lexus? That's a Lexus. Well, I'll be following that with great interest. Uh, I've not seen Alexis on the grid 
in Assetto Corsa Competizione in I'm going to say years actually that that will be very interesting to watch so a couple of more cars 19 seconds remaining the reason I'm waffling a little bit is nobody seems to be on a faster time as the Bentley of Dibrio plays World Rally Cross as he's returned back to the pit lane as there's a lot of drivers now actually car 227 as the checker flagging it out for qualifying Mike Osto is trying his best to separate his lap time from Jack Prentice again exactly the same time don't think I've ever seen that Two, four drivers equaling each other's lap times it's so close there's the competition in this off season event Jack King again got a nice little toe from Prent from his namesake Jack Prentice and takes full advantage and moves himself up into P6 potential team orders there who knows, car 34 is showing as facing the wrong way, that's Popisil Popisil's been off again, car 66 Glinkin, that Lexus is flying it's still out there, it is not giving up anyone driving a Lexus must have a fierce determination and he's not been given a tow by the McLaren the McLaren dives into the pit lane but Glinken's going to continue on and take the checkered flag. Can he improve? He can't, at least not there. Car 314, that is Piscina, is still out there again, trying to jump up into the top 10. He's not able to do so. And the last car on track is Caldwell in the red Ferrari. The number 12 car, can he improve? P20 for Caldwell and that is the end of the final off season qualifying for La Grande Competizione Italiana this is round 3 this is the finale of this off season event it, there are still spaces available for the regular season sign ups are available on simgrid.com Thursday the 4th of April is when the regular season will begin. That starts with late night Thursday. I'm going to talk a little bit about... Hold on a second. That says Popasol's taking pole. When did he do that? Oh, we've just missed that. At the last second, the dying embers of qualifying Popasol takes pole position from Caruana. 88 milliseconds and the Tullock goes into P3 Sween fourth Glinken with the fastest first sector of anyone in the Lexus the straight line speed monster the same time of course as Sween Sween takes the position ahead due to setting the time first Jack King in sixth only half a second down from the pole time again Matthias Diabrell in seventh in the big old Bentley Luke Prentice is 8th good showing from the current championship leader Hutchinson ninth. Mike Austell rounds out the top 10 3 milliseconds behind him is Piscina with Heidmans in P12 I have, a, I have pronounced his name wrong every, sing, different, every single time I have said his name this evening uh, Jack Prentice in P13 Masherpa in 14th Zadihev in 15th and that top right, 15 separated by less than a second that's very impressive Van der Waal 16th Serpentine 17th Sharp 18th Chomakovs in 19th and Caldwell will round out the top 20 Lloyd Chapman 21st Paul Trotman 22nd Nateza in 23rd Sproston 24th and Mr. Gedman carrying out the last to first challenge in 25th let's see if he can do it so quick rundown off the championship order just very quickly before the race starts so we can get a rough idea of how this is all going to play out Luke Prentice is currently first Dibriel is second seven points behind Jack Prentice is 
third. Of course, he won the last off-season miniseries. He's on 133 points. Andrew Tullock, 126 points. Masherpa, 126 points. Glunkin in the likes of 123 points. Myself was seventh in the championship. That's not going to stand. Obviously, Carl Sween is in P8. Popasol in ninth. Sharp in tenth. So that's how the front end of the grid looks, but many points are avail available in these next two races. 40 points for the win, so 80 points are to play for if you get a double win. Point is available for the fastest lap in each race as well. So the championship could obviously go many ways this evening. We'll all keep a quick eye on that, but let's talk about the next season of Formula Racing League. I did mention it starts with late night Thursday on Thursday the 4th of April. That will be at the Hangaro Ring with a very unique format, a three spit, uh, excuse me, three sprint race format, three 15 minute races. We'll then head to, I think it's Brands Hatch. Well, there'll be two 25-minute sprint races in late night Thursday. Um, but, of course, in between it, those two races, there's two other championships. There's Super Sprint Sunday, which is one of the most popular series in Formula Racing League, with multi-class racing taking part. All in the GT3s, but tiered differently, so two different championships running on track at the same time. And, of course, the one everybody wants to win the following Tuesday. Tuesday the 9th. Tackle Tuesday takes place and of course the pro tier will be streamed on this channel as well so keep an eye out for that we're just now awaiting Popasol to get us underway for the start of the formation lap and he does so Popasol moves us off we've got a 40 minute race for race 1 and according to the weather forecast at the top of the screen not only is the track wet, but that rain is going to just keep getting heavier and heavier and heavier. It's also colder than it was in qualifying, so that rain is not going to lift any time soon. So I'm going to leave you with Popasol warming his tyres up as I'm going to get a quick refreshment break. I will be back in less than a minute. Do not go anywhere. Hello everyone, thank you very much for your patience and waiting for me to come back there. We are ready for the start of race one here at La Grande Competizione Italiana. Here at Imola, Opposol is going to lead us underway by virtue of having pole position from Sergio Caruana. 
That's obviously not his name, he'll appreciate that one. Uh, Tullock in third, Sweeney fourth, Glinken in a rear Lexus in fifth with King alongside him. That is the top six. We see them lined up side by side, two by two. And it is biblical conditions here at the circuit of the Autodromo Enzo Edino Ferrari. We are now await the green light to get us underway. We are still waiting. And we are green, green, green. It's an amazing start by Papa Sil. And Tullock, a swing, sorry, swing round the outside of Carolina. They're side by side into turn two. Glinken to the terrible start, bogging down. Carolina goes over the inside curve and goes right on the exit of Tamborillo. He's going to rejoin safely, thankfully, in the wet conditions. Everyone got through relatively safely. It looks like sensible heads prevailing on the way down into turn one. But Carolina is down there showing. Ten for Nathan's contact, that's King and Glinken. And huge contact as Sergio's turns around. Carolina's turned around. Prentice gets no, it's not Prentice, sorry, that is Hutchinson gets turned around and he's been turned around again. As Nateza also goes off at Toza. Popasol is leading the way. Sween in second. Tullock in P3 with the back end stepping out. King is doing well, he's got a long side dive wheel. That's a Ferrari just in front, that's Prentice, the championship leader has made an amazing jump up. Hostel is hustling the back off that Bentley. I'm struggling to work out exactly what's happened. We are going to get a catch up in a second of what's happened in that very eventful first lap that has allowed Chris Gedman to move up to P19 on his last two first challenge and he just loses the rear as I've jumped on to watch him you'll appreciate that no doubt I am sure also showing a little bit of damage but as they come across the line to complete lap one it is Popisol the pole sitter in first Carl Sweden half a second behind with the fastest lap Tullock in P3 the three of them putting a little bit of distance between Luke Prentice, Jack King's following him very closely Matthias Dibriel second in championship will be keeping close tabs on those guys I am sure Austin running a very strong and respectable 7th Hutchinson 8 after the little contact at the start of Lincoln that Lexus very good off the start but now beginning to struggle but as the rain comes down that is a car that will begin to benefit these, from these wet conditions. As Piscina is all over the back, off the rear wing, off Glinken. Nothing but Lexus in his windscreen. Jack Prentice in 11th, Heymans in 12th place. Vander Wall 13th, Sharp 14th. Chomakov in 15th. Please, Dr. Serfi currently running 16th with Paul Trotman on his rear end. Looking to get up close and physical with the South African. Lloyd Chapman running well in 18th, Caldwell 19th, Sproston starts well from the back in P20, the Teaser 21st, Gedman's drop to 22nd after his little spins. The Dehev is 23rd, Gedman feels need to go defensive. There's the two post drivers battling and then Caruana now looking to make his way back through the grid again. It looks like he's struggling slightly on the rear there. Maybe contact with the Dehev as Caruana just squeezes through the smallest of gaps. He'll need to be careful down into the first of these two final corners as Matezer's running very wide. Space has been given looks like at least through the final corner we're going to stick with this pack just now as they come down the main straight into Tamborello Carolina is looking very racy very to be very careful but it is the other push of Sadihev looking down the inside and Carolina with a little love tap to the back of the push 
swings it round the outside and makes the pass complete. Tullock's got himself ahead of Sween, or Sween's been off one of the two. So Popasol still leads the way in the first eight tenths of a second to Tullock. He's running very well in these wet conditions. Luke Prentice currently running in fourth place, leads the championship, does not need to go any quicker as it stands, just needs to keep himself ahead off dive rail. He is currently in sixth. He has King in between those two as support, unofficial support, of course. Lincoln Pierce have got his car now under control. That Lexus is looking a little bit of a handful to begin with, but now running very smoothly. Carolina has still got his Adihev on his rear end. He's going to be pushing hard, I am sure, no doubt. The Porsche looks very quick, actually, in a straight line. like a car having a bit of an issue of walking it was just the camera angle at the time we'll see if the Porsche is straight line speed here it actually makes some inwards and the toe definitely is working but it's not going to be enough at least not on this lap we've got a slow moving car up ahead that's Piscina and Trentis Piscina and Prentice out of shape. And that's Caruana just going, almost going past Jack Prentice. Needs to be very careful. I know Steve's on a bit of a warpath after his start, but he's now cutting his way through the field like a hot knife through ice cream. You all thought I was going to say butter. I cannot believe that. We'll keep an eye on Steve's battle through the field. He's lost the rear at the top of the hill. I think that's coming down into Aqua Mineralli. He's managed to keep it going in the right direction, but he's going to have to fight his way past the Porsche again. And that's the Paul Trotman, Paul Trotman sideways coming out of Variante Alta at the top of sector 2 there. He's not going to fall down the field, he's going to end up just in front of Sproston now. In the green Mercedes. He manages to squeeze his way past Paul, the recovering Paul Trotman. That's not going to be the end of that one though, because look at the big green Mercedes from the front of Trotman's car. He needs to be careful, he doesn't risk at all because he's got Jack Prentice behind who thinks about a move but nothing doing this time as they fly across those curbs. That's going to put him out of position on the way down to Villeneuve. Nothing doing this time as well, and just behind these two, Camerona again getting very close to the back of Zadia. Not being the last best couple of races for the gentleman in the Ferrari. So checking on some interesting situations developing through the field. Now because Prentice is all over the back of Sween into Variante Alta. Now it's a short squat off the throttle down to Revatsa 1 and 2. The front couple of the drivers now beginning to separate a little bit, but Hutchinson now closing the door within a second off that Lexus. The Lexus running well in P8. Mike Oster as well running his own race there just in front of this group in P7. However, we've got a Ferrari that's not the quickest in the straight line with a lot of drag due to the damage on the front of his car. We've also got a Lexus, which is an absolute rocket ship in a straight line. 
next year if anything's to happen here as Glenkin gets so close to that white line. Look how clothing speed at the top end of the straight. Not enough for Glenkin to make the move on this occasion. Hedgeman's now coming into turn one on the back. Off oh, sharp. Nothing doing, at least not this time. Car on the grass. That's Paul Trotman. Having some difficulty controlling that McLaren in these, like we said, biblical conditions. They're no longer driving two by two, that is for sure. My Sherpert down there in the pits. Is that the end of my Sherpert's race this evening? It very well could be. Germans has had another incident. He's now 10 seconds off the back of the pack. The conditions not working well for the well, one half of the Admin team. With Germans at the back there. Prentice not running well for himself either. Jack Prentice running down in P19. Let's see how Sprostin's doing. He's got. A very wide looking Jack Prentice there behind. Is that going to put Jack Prentice out of position? Can Trotman uh, take advantage? He can. Trotman's down the inside into the chicane. He makes the new stick. Good, confident move by Paul Trotman in the McLaren. So, a little bit of a lowdown 10 minutes into the race. Popisil leads by just under a second these guys have now dropped Prentice what's happened to Sween? Sween's now down there been battling Hutchinson for P8 Hutchinson down the inside off the post driver that's a good solid move by Hutchinson but it's not over not by a long shot because Sween is not letting that one go thinks about it down into the view now she came doesn't make anything, doesn't try to force anything at this moment in time, it's very tight there at the back, a lot of cars side by side, that is Caldwell being overtaken by Sproston as well, Caldwell maybe having some issues just at the back of that shot there, Caruana and Zadiev side by side into Villeneuve both drivers leaving each other, and oh, that's incredible driving in these conditions, space being left by these absolute consummate professionals and nothing doing there, that's great driving again a little bit up ahead Sproston is now got ahead off Caldwell as has Trotman and Caldwell is under severe pressure now that red Ferrari not looking too good as the rain begins to fall a little bit harder these six almost pushing each other along the track side by side up ahead Sproston and Trotman Trotman backs out of it this time takes a lot of that inside curb does the McLaren driver and he looks back from that gay glow green wheel wing off Sproston does Trotman think about it down into Vervatsa it's not normally an overtaking move position but you can see the closing speed that's a Lamborghini off at Rivazza 1 and there's contact and Jack Prentice into the side of Sproston Sproston a little bit of a passenger there as Prentice careered into his rear end Hutchinson's got a lot of damage what is going on there Hutchinson's been in the wall he obviously lost it coming down into Rivazza 1 and ended up facing the wrong way but that is another green car being hit there within two corners up front Popisil leads Tullock 2.1 seconds majestic performance from the McLaren driver up front Luke Prentice currently runs in third place in the podium positions now that might no it's not going to secure it because Dibrio is sitting there in P5 only going to be a two point swing so it is going to go down to the final race Austell now in 6th place got himself ahead of Lincoln in 7th Sween down in 8th after starting up in 2nd up to P2 at the end of lap 1 Van der Waal 9th sharp 10th race at the top 10 Heidemann's in P11 Chomakov's 12th under pressure from the doctor 
And the doctor's also under pressure from Chapman, Lloyd Chapman in the blue, red and white Mercedes. Going to get a tow here down into Revanza. We've got yellow flags, car 269. That's Broston facing the wrong way at Peratella. In car 713, that's Steve, Car Steve Caruana's ported back to the pit lane. That may be the end of his race one this evening. He'll be back for race two. Lloyd Chapman was hoping to get a little bit of a tow from the BMW down this straight. He is the meat in a BMW sandwich just now. And no changes to those guys. But this is what he thinks about it down the inside of Tamburello. That's going to put him out of shape through two. And now under pressure as Piscina squeezes down the inside there's slight side by side contact door banging, wet conditions is very difficult for these guys, he thinks about it down the inside and there's contact through Villeneuve both of them now ran wide as Lloyd Chapman makes contact with Piscina Piscina does continue on, he's able to get himself out of the gravel trap on this occasion up ahead of Dibriel, King has ran wide on the exit Aqua Minerale and into Variante Bassa and of course the Bentley can just drive clean over those sausage curbs as if they do not exist. Hostel's now feeling a little bit off the pressure. We've got about a minute and a half before the pit window opens and things could all change. So between Trotman and the Taser is a bit of a gap opened up. Hutchinson's absolutely struggling with the damage on that Lamborghini as Germin almost tries to nudge him round the corner. <laughs> Germin gives the position back. What are these two doing? Both cars look like they are carrying an absolute scrap dealer's dream of damage as they try to make things work Dibriel's on the back of King still only a couple of tenths of a second separate these two would you believe it if I told you Gedman and Hutchinson's come together again at the chicane Green's now on the back of Glinken. Like really applying the pressure. Look at this. On board now with that screen. You see the spray being kicked up. And that's the pit window open. Now the first car going to be coming through there is going to be car 22. That is Hutchinson and Gedman who have managed to make it first into the pits. So they're going to go through the pit lane. Is Popisil going to do the same thing? Will Popisil and Tullock dive into the pits? We're watching them now. Popisil's going to continue one more lap. Tullock does the same thing. So those guys now continuing. Luke Prentice does the typical Prentice strategy and goes for the overcut. Jack King follows him with Matthias Dibriel. Mike Ostel, Glinken go into the pit, Sween continues on for at least another lap, Van der Waal has lost the rear, and now cuts across the pit lane directly in front of Sharp, no contact this time, at least, but he makes the pit lane, so Hyman's and Sharp continue on, as does Chomakov's surfing time enters the pit lane, running a very smooth race, as is Chapman, Piscina continues on as well, Caldwell dives into the pit's Prentice, continues on, so some difference in strategy Zadihev enters the pits but Paul Trotman will continue on for one more lap interesting so top 3 top 4 continued on there, electing to go one more lap pit window on the top right off the screen, the drivers must enter the pit lane before that timer hits zero So Popisol is still out there. 
think both everyone trying to just maybe eke it out a little bit longer sprossed them now into the pits as well and the teaser still out there laughing Genman's completing the pit lane and Hutchinson's electing either electing to not come back out or he just has that much damage to fix we'll see now does Popasol do not this lap either Popasol continues on He's very likely going to have to pit in one more lap. Tullock takes the pit lane, as does Jack Prentice, as does, sorry, Luke Prentice, as does Jack King. Carl Sween continues for one more lap, so Sween risking it, looking to have the fresher tyres towards the end of the race. And that's the other point as well, sorry, that's the other point. Does anyone take new tyres actually, or do they all just take fuel? Coming out of the pit lane now, car number eight, that is the Dehev. The join in P20. It's going to be pretty hard to work out exactly who's going to come out where. But everyone coming through now, this is Dibrio in the Bentley. It will be very interesting to see exactly where he slots into. The drivers are currently all in the pits. Everyone from 4th down to 12th ahead of Dibrio in the pits. So this will be very interesting. Car number 65 is first out. That is Tullock. He was running a net 2 actually. Let's have a look at that. So Sproston. The lap down. From the leaders. Tullock's out fine. Luke Prentice has been jumped by Dibrio. Dibrio's taken effectively P3 off Luke Prentice. That will close the gap in the championship, setting us up for a grandstand finish, if it were to finish as it currently stands. So Popasol's entered the pit lane within a 16 second gap to Carl Sweeney. And Sharp a further 13 seconds back, but the question remains where does Tullock feature in all of this? As Sween now enters the pit lane, and we're going to start the stopwatch. The purpose of stop five, six, seven. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. 25. Popasol takes tyres is the story. That was very close to a 30 second stop. The question is, I think Talek is not done enough. The window is now closed. As the pit window is closed, anyone not yet entered the pit lane is in trouble. The Taser has entered the pit lane, so he will be fine to continue as Talek is now on the main straight, but Popasol's out there several seconds ahead. So the question is now, did Popasol take those tyres or did he miss his spot? Because that's quite a big gap to pull out over one lap. As the driver track will hopefully now begins to just even itself out. Some close battling going on here as we've got Piscina on the rear of the Lamborghini of Chomakovs. You can see offline the track just beginning to get wetter and wetter. The car is currently lapping around here. Maybe it looks like they're just keeping that dry line. A slightly grippier line. As Chomakov gets out of position coming through. And there's contact, Piscina again involved in the wars. That one very likely will end up going to the Stewards as Chomakov tries to rejoin. Space is given by Lloyd Chapman as he comes through Serpentine. Not able to take advantage of that situation. There will be some discussion in the stewards room after this race for that I have no doubt 
This is an off-season race, but it doesn't mean they all can't be professional. So 15 minutes left to go, the forecast is again for the rain to continue to get heavier and heavier. We'll see if that has any impact on these drivers. That's one thing that remains to be seen. But as the drivers begin lap 14, it is Popaso out in front of a 6 second gap to Tullock. Diabrell is in P3. As Luke Prenter, a second behind Carl Sweeney, has benefited massively during the pit stops and now into P5. Nope, take that back there, Sween. Yeah, Sween's P5. King down in P6. It looks like King may be taking tyres. Glinken just tucked in behind in P7. Ostel in 8th with Sharp a couple of tenths behind in Knight Vandal Wall. Now is in P10. Hyman's in P11 with Piscina in 12th. Chapman 13, Chunakov's in P14, Serpentine, Dr. Surface currently in P15. The Mint Green Baby running in 16th, Paul Trotman 17th, Caldwell 18th, Zaviev in P19 again as Chunakov gets out of shape coming through Villeneuve. Again, maybe opening the door for the good doctor. Frosten currently in P20, we've seen a spin earlier on, Gedman's in 21st, 30 seconds behind Frosten, we've seen the troubles Gedman was having, Mateza is in 22nd, Hutchinson has rejoined, currently 23rd of all the runners, but obviously points given down to 40th, so Hutchinson will receive points for that finish as long as he does indeed finish. Caruana and Masherpa looks like they are in the pits and retired from the race. Now this is interesting because we've got Sween on the back of Prentice who's under pressure. Sween tries to swing it round the outside of Tamborello. Now they're coming into Villeneuve Chicane. Sween knows you cannot throw it down the inside on the wet track. Overtaking will be very difficult now because the racing line is so much drier, so much grippier than the rest of the circuit. Of course it's not over, Dibre is only a couple of seconds in front of this lot as well. Yeah, I can't give us great shots as they go around Piratella, they're into Aqua Minerali. Luke Prentice feeling the need to go to either go defensive or maybe he's made a mistake with his tyre pressures and they're now beginning to struggle and he's trying to cool them down yellow flag big crash at the Villeneuve chicane that is Caldwell and I think Hutchinson it's Hutchinson again Hutchinson involved in the wars this evening Caldwell currently running P18. I think maybe Hutchinson trying to unlap himself. I know Hutchinson's got pace. That's there, that's Luke Prentice again. Looking for the real ring. See the closing speed of the portion to Villeneuve, but it's not really an overtaking move. Can't really make that move into there. It's a very tricky corner. You really need to be alongside. Told us a different story. You can line up a move. As we see Sproston getting out of the way, but not completely. Maybe slightly compromising Sween's exit there. 
on board with the post now. We can see the rain, the spray being kicked up by the back of the Ferrari. Right, it's again looking very squirmy actually coming through there. Now what's going to happen with these two again? It looks like Caldwell is, sorry Hutchinson is obviously been lapped, but has the pace. He is allowed to unlap himself, that is allowed. He obviously you cannot hinder the car in front, he does it again, he throws it up the inside. Caldwell, if he was, cl if he was clever about it, he would let Hutchinson go. And just follow him. Let him go before the final corner, get a toe out of it and you won't lose any more time. What's going on here? So we've got Chapman. Chapman's now went over the curb actually on the exit of Valiante Alta, but got himself ahead of Chomikovs, Serpentine and Jack Prentice now next in that queue. Van der Waal also now got, I think that's Sharp, he's got himself ahead of Sharp, but Sharp's not letting it go. Helicopter show it looked like they were closer, but the helicopter showing the differences between those two on the straight. This is that gaggle of cars again, they'll all be pulling each other along that straight. But the question is Hutchinson and Caldwell still giving each other grief. This is only going to end in absolute tears. Eight minutes left to go off race one this evening. And Hutchinson thinks about it again, but nothing doing. He's right wide. And that Lamborghini does not like curves and he's spun. So that's the end of that chapter. That one's now dealt with. This is the view from the mid green baby of oh, Jack Prentice. And you've got a windshield full of spray and burnt orange BMW rear bumper. And he gets takes liberties with the track limits on the exit of Aqua Minerali. And Surfy a little bit. Out of position with Mr. Serpentine. He's now a consultant, but unfortunately, he's lost a position. Jack Prentice has penalised that, but it's not over. He's not going to give it that go. He keeps it close, he's almost contact. Oh, he was alongside. Was he in, he'll argue he was entitled to room. Did Prentice leave the space? And we'll see that one again, might be discussed in the steward's room later on. So up front, Popasol is out in front. He leads Tullock now by seven and a half seconds. It's been an absolute master class of wet driving, wet weather driving by Popasol. Dibrail is currently running in P3. He's got the Bentley up into third. It's a good race from the Bentley driver. And Luke Prentice, championship leader, is in fourth. So third and fourth are the inverse of the first and second in the championship. And Sween pushing very hard to try and keep in touch with the lead Prentice car. Jack King performing very well this evening as well. Up in P6, he's got Sproston just in front as lapped traffic. Blinken runs in seventh under the silly banner. You can see the dry line there. Is it a dry line or is the rest of the track just getting wetter? With six minutes left, Mike Ostal absolutely flying. A great race from them. Very so solid and consistent running in P8. Sharp, who we just seen get in front of Van der Waal, running ninth. And Van der Waal in tenth. Big battle going on here, now this is Chamakovs 
under pressure from Prentice. Kovakov is run too deep there. Prentice is going to sneak through up the inside of Ravazzo 1. And now it's Chapman. He needs to get to see his rear view mirror be filled more and more by the colour green. So, rundown of what has happened. Popasol leads now by 8 seconds. That's an impressive gap. Let's see what this current order, what permutations it has for the championship. At least as it stands anyway. Safe to see Jack Prentice has moved himself out of the way of the championship. Andrew Tullock's done everything he can to move himself into contention. Masherpa is not able to continue on I'm hearing due to latency issues, lag issues. Not able to drive unfortunately so he is out. Right, okay, so it is a century, I think, between Luke Prentice and Matthias Dyber for the championship. Now is Jack Prentice in third. He's moved himself out of contention. Andrew Tullock is 24 points behind. That's a big chunk to overturn in one race. Three minutes 20 remaining. These two are pushing for fourth place. Still only half a second between them. This looks like the closest battle currently on track. We'll keep an eye on the Chapman Prentice situation as well as these guys look very close. Nothing doing this time around, so we'll jump back to Sweden. He's doing his best to reel in Luke Prentice. The scene has actually closed into the back of 10th placed car Wouter Heymans. BMW versus BMW, no car advantage there whatsoever. As we see the chasing car getting a little bit out of shape over the curbs. just be absolutely relentless. It's the wettest it's been since the session, since the race started. It looks like it's only going to continue to get wetter and wetter as we go. King is now also feeling the pressure from Lincoln. There was some battles still going out throughout the race with the final couple of minutes remaining. This seems to be the closest one on board with Carl Sweet currently running in P5. Definitely still there from both of these guys. You can see them still attacking every curb, even in these horrific conditions. One minute and ten, nine, eight, seven remaining as Popisol comes across the line now to start the final right, lap. Blinken has lost the rear. That's going to open up a little bit of a gap. 
as Jack King laps Nateza. Nateza's got on the grass though, he looks like he's defended that, he's not meant to, a little bit of contact between King and Nateza and that's now put him back under pressure from Lincoln. Nateza's carrying a absolute mess of a car there, that must have no downforce left. As he moves over to it's Sprost and pass, but back up there with King, it looks like King's got a decent exit. And that's going to keep him in that position. But again, look at the closing speed in the final stages of that straight from that Lexus. As Lincoln struggles to get it slowed down for turn one. The Lexus looks like it's in a lot more control as we look back today. Oh, Lincoln loses the rear and straight into the wall. Lincoln is in the wall in the last lap. Absolute tragedy for him the checkered flag is now out yellow flag still waving for the Lexus driver is he able to get it moving again he is he's got it moving he's hopefully going to rejoin in front of the cars coming through that is an absolutely horrific rejoin and that one will certainly be presented to the stewards later on car 269 is now showing us off that's Sproston Boston's off track at, uh, I think it's Rivazza, Pivotella, Pivotella, but that is the end of 40 minutes of straight racing, and it is, Vakla Popisil comes across the line to take the checkered flag, here at race 1 at Imola, Tullock is, Tullock is currently running in P2, just behind them though, Tullock's going to take second, Dibio third, Prentice just holds on, it looks like to Carl Sween. He's on the rear, the checker flags out and saved Prentice one more lap. I think Sween would have had it two tenths of a second between them. Jack King is going to come home and take P6, takes the checker flag, there he is. Mike Ostel comes across the line, takes the checker flag and a well deserved seventh place finish for the Finn. Van der Waals currently running in P8, he's got Highlands in 9th, and Piscina closely follows in P10. Van der Waal, Highlands and Piscina. Glinken's going to take P11, he's got... Oh sorry, Sharp's taking P11. Glinken's currently running 12th with Jack Prentice just behind, but... But... Well, that stand after the stewards have had their say. Chapman 14th, Chomakov's 15th, Serpentine 16th, Trotman holds on to 17th, a couple of tenths ahead of Zadehev. Caldwell's going to come home in P19, Sproston's crossed the line already in 20th. Chris Gedman crosses the line as well, and a I've nothing to say. Nothing to say with that one. So that's everyone now across the line. And the provisional order of that is Popisil, Tullock, Dibriel, Luke Prentice, Carl Sween, Jack King, Mike Hostel, Michael van der Waal, Walter Hymans, Piscina rounds off the top 10 sharp, Glinken, Prentice, Chapman, Chomikov, Serpentine, Trotman, Zadihev, Caldwell, Sproston, Gedman, Hutchinson, Nateza a lap down, Caruana and Miss Sherper did not finish. And that's the race order for race one. Very interesting race, definitely some talking points in that one. Get those highlights saved. And what I'm going to do now is just talk you through what you need to do if you want to be a part of this action. This isn't the off season. I've lost control of my camera controls. Give me two seconds. There we go. So this is the Formula Racing League console off-season. The regular season is scheduled to start on 
Thursday the 4th of April and we have three exciting championships running concurrently. So on the Thursday, as the name suggests, we'll have Late Night Thursday. On Sunday evenings, 8 o'clock UK time, we have Pure Sim Gear Super Sprint Sunday, which is, and then on the Tuesday, on the Tuesday night after that, we'll have the one everybody wants to win, that is Tackle Tuesday. Those are the three championships that will be running. The Thursday series start a little bit later, as the name suggests, late night Thursday. That starts, I think, at 9... I can't remember, 9.45. should probably have checked that before I started this plug. It's definitely a little bit later. That is for certain. 9.30, sorry, 9.30 is when it starts. Um with varying race formats which take place. So we've got some triple headers, some double headers, some longer endurance races, different pit stop rules. Um, that'll be very exciting to see who can adapt, who can thrive in those changing conditions. Thank you for that one, Engineer. Uh, on the Sundays, We'll have Super Sprint Sunday, which is a series of sprint races, a 20 minute and 40 minute sprint race uh, to the finish. No mandatory pit stops that will be taking place on the same tracks as late night Thursday. And that will be running all season alongside concurrently. And then Tackle Tuesday, what we do is we'll have, uh, we'll have all the drivers placed into the respective tiers. So you'll be racing with people of similar speed and you'll go into your own servers and be racing against everyone in the server for the championship. There will be the pro, pro tier at the very top. Then we go down to Silver, Pro-Am and Am. The sort of newer drivers learning the ropes. And that takes place every Tuesday night from half past eight. And of course, we do encourage everyone to sign up for these races at www.thesimgrid.com. All you need is, obviously, to sign up through SimGrid. You'll need to follow Formula Racing League on Discord. All the race particulars are communicated via Discord. You also need, obviously, the copy of a set of course, a competizione for PlayStation 5. Or, for the first time, Xbox. This is cross-play. Servers are set up to host both PlayStation and Xbox drivers for the first ever time, our first ever cross-play cross, cross play season. So get a hold of that, get signed up and get part in the action because Formula Racing League really is sim racing at its very best. We are here tonight, if you've just joined us as well, we've got race two. This is the finale, the final race in our off-season, pre-season whatever you want to call it, let's get ready for the big one season preparation races, this has been our Italian GT Championship, La Grande Competizione Italiana and this is the finale at Autodromo Enzo Edino Ferrari we've got another 40 minutes the same sort of race set up as before but this time this time it looks like the weather is going to get progressively slightly better you can see however the dry line that was built up in the first race has now completely vanished 10 seconds puddles standing water will all exist and of course when I say the rain is going to get lighter it's going to slightly lighten in about half an hour's time so the drivers will have these heavy rain conditions to contend with Again, we all have one mandatory pit stop, exactly the same as before, in the middle of the race. So the question is, when does that reduction in rainfall occur? And do the drivers take a change of tyres to accommodate? Or have they set the car up to accommodate just now? So what I'm going to do is show you from the driver's point of view what they'll see. This is... Coming down into turn one, we're on board with Chad Lloyd Chapman. This is turn one, Tamarillo. 
some sausage curbs on the inside. You don't want to cut too much of that in these wet conditions. Important to get a good exit flat out through turn three for the run down to the Villeneuve Chateau. On board there's a Vihev in the fallout coloured yellow and green Porsche. This is the Villeneuve Chicane. The left hand braking zone and then you want to keep yourself over to the left on the way in to maximise your exit and not almost put it into the wall as the Vihev does there. This is Toza, the hairpin, Toza hairpin. Want to take a late apex to get a good drive up the hill and in these conditions you don't want to be on that cab. They come on board with Jack King as he comes around the corner at the top off the hill at Pivotella, I think I've got that right, it's Pivotella very tricky, high speed left hander, an absolute joy to drive when you get it spot on Caruana doesn't get much driving in the first race he's going to take us round Aqua Minerali right hand corner turning while braking, very challenging in the back end just wants to step away on exit and come over up the hill over the crest a true test of ability especially in these conditions we'll see that again maybe from somebody a little bit further back from Gedman Chris Gedman will show us again he's breaking all the way there still coming right on the foot, foot right foot down the acceleration out into the next chicane Mike Ostall takes us over Variante Alta High curbs on the inside, cut as much as you dare. Hutchinson's going to start a ninth behind dive rail. And you'll see here what it looks like under the silly banner. As they now form up two by two. This is the view. Look at the spray they're going to have to contend with. Revata one and Revata two. Revata two, of course. Very important to get a good exit out of there to maximise your speed onto the straight and keep yourself competitive and really give yourself a good chance into turn one. So now we are ready to get us underway for race two as the field lines up two by two again. The weather is no less biblical as it was in race one. Opposite on the left in the McLaren, Caruana on the right in the Gold, sorry, that day blue, green and black Ferrari, Tullock second, Sween third, Glinken fourth, King fifth. We await the green flag to get us underway for race two. Hold, hold, green and we are green, green, green. We are underway. Popperson's got off well again. That Ferrari very slow starting. Sween's tucked in behind, and that's going to open the door for Tullock. The Ferrari is so brave on the brake, keeps it under control, a little bit out of control for the Lamborghini. They've got contact there at the back, it looks like. It looks like Lloyd Chapman may be involved in a bit of an incident. Sween off track again, but this time. Caruana has kept it close behind Popperson and looks to be ready to mount a challenge for a race too. Can he keep it going? Only time will tell. It gets a little bit sketchy down into Toza and Villeneuve this is where the contact can happen looks like nothing major has gone on they've got a BMW off track on the exit of Toza but no one's race looks like is ruined in the first couple of laps that's good to see Caruana not letting this one go it looked like in qualifying and in free practice Caruana had the pace to live with Popperson we'll see if that he can do that through a race distance as they all now come through Variante Alta and this is where the cars all finally at race speed. We've got a car in the pits. Ruter Hyman's is in the pits and retired. It looks, looks like maybe retired just now. We'll see if anything, if he looks to rejoin, but maybe he's been sent off the track. Maybe he's spun or something. It was safer to return. Prentice and Pessina fighting hard. It looks like Prentice is alongside. Look how close these two are to touching. Prentice has kept the position at least temporarily just now. Again, Sproston, I think, there with Gedman just in front and Trotman behind. Looking particularly racy. Trotman makes a little mistake coming out of the final corner. Is that going to compromise him? We'll double check with that in a second. 
but Hoppersell's got a big enough gap to st Steve Carolina out in front. Tullock cross the line in the third, Sweden fourth, Blinken in fifth. King sixth, Trent is seventh, Dibriel is in P8. Hutchinson ninth, Austell rounds out the top ten at the end of lap one. Looks like Sproston. Oh no, who's that running down? Is that German off track? He's had to concede a position to Trotman. And he's been a little bit out of control for the Taser there. The Taser under pressure potentially. And German went straight on the Toza. Sproston's taken the inside line on the exit of Toza and found a position there. Looks like the Taser was still being overtaken there. Lloyd Chapman, the Taser's off! The Taser flying off at the top of the hill at Pivotella. Just missed what happened there. There may have been contact. King is tucked in behind Glinkin and really takes as much curve as that Ferrari will allow. As does Hutchinson behind the Lamborghini. These low down Italian supercars really taking liberties with their suspension at this early stage. Prentice is under severe pressure from Dibrio. This is key for the championship as Prentice in a four-wheel drift round the Vats of two. Is that now going to put him under pressure? That Bentley is so quick in a straight line. Oh, that was so close. I think it'll be a gear change from the Ferrari driver. Put him out of position, the Bentley alongside into turn one. Who's going to come out on top? They've got another car, Hutchinson, straight into the wall. That's a huge contact. His Stephen Collins was locked. He's knocked the back of the car. He's facing the wrong way. He's in the middle of the track. Drivers, you need to be careful. There's yellow flags out. You've got to watch how you're approaching that corner. But Hutchinson faced the wrong way and really paying the price there as he slides sideways going full Bottas there into turn one and there's some more little bit of argy bargy going on some door banging Chamakov keeps it down the inside the Trotman Trotman's going to get a good exit though he's on the curb the traction controls then going to kick in Woo. Need some time to recover, I think, from that one. So, who is the real winners there after all of that? And there's been contact there for Sharp Serpentine. But Sherpa has found himself in a good position up there in P12. Chapman in P18. Messina, love of Jack Prentice, looks to have profited quite well from that one. Now we're watching here, King's got past Dibriel. That could be crucial for the championship. The situation is now. Dibriel is going to get a double toe down this long start finish straight. Dry line beginning to appear now. This one's going to slightly improve as it goes on. We're going to see less and less mistakes as the weather, the rain, should ease off in intensity. The question is, will the worn tyres at that point then become an issue? As King's got a four-wheel drift coming through the veal now of Chicane. Austin's also got a Jack Prentice behind him as well. So Jack King has now lost that position again to Dibriel, who's moved on in front. Serpentine's been off track at Tamburello. A lot of damage on the front of that car. No damage on Chris Germans. Hutchinson again in the pits. That will very likely be him for the rest of the evening. Duncan taking liberties with the track limits there at Aqua Minerale. Finds himself behind Tullock. Car number four, that is Mar Sherpa off track. Aquaminavalli is a three Mercedes side by side. 
the recovering Masherpa are not able to defend from Chapman and Sproston but it goes deep into the chicane does it make contact at least not this time the driver I am interested in just now however is going to be Lloyd Chapman who is all over the back of Sproston Mercedes versus Mercedes here no power advantage as Chapman looks to get a a little bit sideways, a little bit squeamish. The back end of the car just seeing you right guy, you're on the edge here, maybe calm it down and about to disappear in front of your bonnet. A little bit of a tank slapper there. Chapman thinks about it, shows his nose at the inside, but that's gonna compromise him and only rejoin as Miss Sherpa takes the position back. So up ahead we've got Glinken, Prentice, Diabrio, King, Ostal and Jack Prentice all in the same frame. Kyle Rana is under severe pressure as well from Sween up ahead. Sween's on a flyer. Or as Kyle Rana made an error, we don't quite know exactly what's happened. But, but, it's brought Sween back into the game. Prentice being held up now by Glinken and this is the thing when you're stuck behind the leg says as Prentice feels the need to go defensive again maybe just showing his nose trying to force Glinken over that massive curb on the inside of the chicane so what's going to happen here it looks like Glinken's maybe holding up Jack Prentice but the straight line speed off that Lexus is going to keep him in front and the problem that then presents the championship leader is that Diabrio is in a Bentley and that thing is a rocket ship in a straight line also lap 6 is started Popisol leads the way he's got a 3.2 second gap to Caruana but look at this battle here this 3 way fight Sween doesn't do anything at this time Prentice is defending hard from Diabrio there's a little bit of contact the slightest little touch nothing too serious this conjecture big battle going on further back there that's the Dehev Chapman Chumakovs the Dehev's actually out in front there yep. Chapman's lost yeah behind sorry Chapman's just behind Chumakovs one more position behind him Chapman just tucked in there all within a couple of tenths of a second a lot of action going on here at the start of race two in our finale of the Grande Competizione Italiana Buonasera if you are watching from Italy and you have been attracted to us with the name of the championship as Camerano runs wide tries to rejoin but Sween takes P2 capitalises on the mistake from Camerano and the thing is can he then defend from Tullock he does at this time Blinken still there in front early turning into that chicane appears to be the, his line of preference as he looks backwards from the Lincoln now he has got that big red Ferrari look at the closing distance of that Ferrari he goes round the outside does well to avoid contact again now he is compromised onto the street and he's going to have to fight the big old Bentley of Matthias Diabriel on board the left hand side of the car as Diabriel tries to sneak it down the inside so close to the wall you could struggle to get a piece of paper in that gap but now Diabriel's got himself in front Prentice on the inside unable to defend and Matthias Diabriel takes P6 from the championship leader and does everything he can to take that championship from Luke Prentice's hands. Are you going to need a bit of a favour, I think, from Jack King on this occasion? We've had a lot to go through here at the start. We may have missed some battles. If you are watching and you want to find out how your favourite driver is getting on, Please leave a message in the chat. I will of course respond to it and do not forget to like and subscribe to Formula Racing League TV at FRL Race Hub on YouTube. You can also follow us on the rest of our socials on Instagram 
same handle at FRL Race Hub. And of course, feel free to join the Discord, Formula Racing League Discord. You can get your invite to join that on the simgrid.com. Next up to try and make his way past the Lexus is the bit two massive cars here. We've got the Bentley and looks like he's just driving clean past the side of that Lexus. And that is another point. And they're still fighting. The Lexus is still going. It's, but the, he's went deep. I don't know if there was contact there. Look close. But look at this. He's trying to be joining. He squeezes. Squeezes the Bentley. And there's more contact as Glinkin tries to rejoin, and that's allowed Luke Prentice back through. Jack King now side by side with the Bentley, and he's now got the added pressure of Mike Hostel in the Ferrari, trying to get a toe from the Bentley. But look at the Ferrari, so good on the brakes. Gets the position done, but we'll now watch the Bentley straight line speed is torqued out of the corners he's had to get out of that one to avoid contact so in a matter of a couple of laps the order has changed and with it the championship pitcher Popasol, Sweden and Carolina are not in a position to win the championship at least not right now neither Tullock is in with a position to win the championship but requires a bad result from Luke Prentice and Matthias Diebielt to do so as Jack King goes wide on the exit of Piratella into Aqua Minerari now there's two they don't go side by side through there that's not one that works unfortunately just up ahead it looks like maybe a little bit of an issue who's that it's going slowly there that's Steve, Steve Caruana has lost a position, lost many positions to Aquaman and Rally and now dropped back behind this battle. He's now maybe I think down there in P9. And that's relieved some pressure from Popisil out in front. As King now runs wide, he's going to be careful with his rejoin. His Kings now rejoined in front of Carolina. The side by side Ferrari versus Ferrari. However, the recovering King is going to be down on straight line speed, but he's going to get a small toe from the Aston Martin in front. Carolina's got the racing lines on the wet stuff, though. He's able to get it slowed down in time and makes the overtake. The big winner in all of this has to be Mike Austell, now up into P6. And Luke Prentice recovers now a couple of seconds ahead of Matthias Dibriel. And that looks like the championship has swung back in Luke Prentice's direction. Both of these drivers not really been involved in any incidents either, so it's unlikely I mean, so far anyway. Such would commentator's curse. Hopefully no further incidents between them as Lloyd Chapman's almost pushing Schumacher's Lamborghini around the veal now chicane they're into Toza oh the back end of that Lamborghini looks like it there's a seat a little bit of action there's a little bit second hand Chapman very cautious over the inside curb at Pelotella of course, as Ron Dennis once said, to finish first, first you must finish. A little close little four-way battle developing here now. Carolina defending from. King, Piscina and Lincoln. That Lexus has not given up. Look at the speed. Wow! He drives clean round the outside. There's contact. He's touched. And he hits King. Piscina hit the back of Lincoln. Who was then hit like a pool ball into the back end of King. 
those guys not really have anything to say about that one. We'll see if that will end up in the stewards' room as well. But that's relieved the pressure for Caruana a little bit at the moment. The Cena seen his fair share of action this evening. The Sherpa and Caldwell, very close battle, and then with Glinkin just in front of them as well. Well, that's the pit window now open. This is where the next set of chaos can ensue. We've got a slow moving car at Aquamana Valley. That again, that looks like Carolina. Carolina, not, not Prentice. The championship table takes another turn as Luke Prentice now down in P7. With Dibrio in P5, that's another swing in Dibrio's favour. The Sherpa off track at Variante Alta now as well. That's the number four Mercedes currently shown as 14th on the driver tracker. So the pit windows open, the leader goes past. Sween and Tullock go past. Austal into the pits with Caruana as well. Jack Prentice, Luke Prentice, Sharp. King all continue on, Lincoln and Caldwell jump into the pit lane with Sherpa is going to be the next person through, that's Sproston into the pit lane, Sproston ahead of Masherpa. Zadihev into the pits, they're all flying in to change their tyres Chomakov stays out, ah, does, as does the 246 of Paul Trotman Serpentine with the heavily damaged car, thinks about coming in, doesn't come in in the end Vandal Wall is coming in to change the ref refuel and potentially repair that damage. Chris Gedman running 21st. Does Chris Gedman think about a tyre change? He doesn't, well, no, he's thinking about a tyre change, but he definitely comes in this lap to feel as Nateza is going to end up with a pit lane speeding penalty. That is for certain. Chapman is showing he wasn't sure he was in the pit there so maybe he's had some connection issues Popasol's out there after completing 10 laps he's got a 15 second gap to the next car on track that is Matthias Dibrio but Dibrio is not running a net second so Popasol's now into the pits what does the Bentley driver do? Luke Prentice is already pity. That is the, his main rival for the evening. No, he's not, up. actually. Luke Prentice continues on for one more lap. Luke Prentice going for the overcut. Pacina in fifth. Sharp and King now choose to pit on this lap. Oh, that's a big shot into the wall there from Sharp. Obviously realising he's not slowing the car down in time for the pit lane. Hoping to save more time by repairing damage than he would get from a drive through penalty. Quite clever, actually. So Trotman continues for one more lap as well. So Prentice, Piscina, Trotman, Serpentine, Pitts this time around. He would not have got around one more time, so who's not pitted yet? Trotman. We need to watch to make sure Trotman is able to get into the pits in time. I think the driver, we get this in the teaser, stop go penalty for speeding in the pit lane. That one was expected. We'll see if there's any more penalties dished out. As Dibriel now comes out of the pit. So this is, a, this is the one. This is the one that matters. Car 65. That's Tullock. So I see what Dibrio's done there. Dibrio looks like he's maybe not taken tyres. Yep, car 750. That is King. King gets a drive through penalty for speeding in the pit lane as well. King off the back. And another penalty, that's Sharp. Sharp, we were seeing Sharp's one get a stop go penalty. So King has just got a drive-through. Will Sharp 
and a stop no penalty we wanted this double check on Trotman is he going to get back to the pits he's got 26 seconds to do so Robin McLaren driver gets back to the pit lane in time on board with him this is his helmet man this will show you exactly what Trotman sees from his cockpit 11 10 9 8 7 gets it slowed down 4 3 2 oh he just makes it across the line Trotman well done judged to perfection my man so Popasol leads Sweden 8 seconds Dibriel has got himself up to a net 3rd place 1, 2, 3, 4 where is he? This is the interesting one. There goes Sween. Dibio's coming on the start finish straight now. And he goes past. Where is he? Where is he? Luke Fitness joins the pit to the track and now he is behind Dibio. There's a multitude of cars between them. One, two, three. One. Oh, we'll, let, we'll let it update itself. I'm not going to try it. Let the track update itself. One, two, three, four cars now between them. That's four points difference. And if you look at the results from race one, it's five point swing in the championship. And he needs seven. Diabil needs seven points. This is so close. Diabil needs the win or Prentice to finish ninth in the current situation. So we'll keep an eye on the championship permutations. Jack Prentice is within a shout but needs these two to fail to finish as does Tullock. So that is the championship battle just now. Popisil I don't think is in a position to win the championship. He's not. Okay. And neither Sween, I don't think. I think Sween's got a big, big ask for Sween to jump. Yeah, Sween is a 40, 30 point swing, so that's probably not happened this evening as well. So, Popasol leads Sween by 6.6 .6 seconds as we've got a car rejoining from a pit lane. I think that is Sharp serving the pit lane there. Chapman did. Right, okay, so Chapman looked like he got disconnected and therefore missed the pit window. And that is a 14, 15 minutes left. We've spotted that one, so Chapman looks like he's may going to be under, unfairly disqualified here, so I hope he keeps going. Is that Hopefully he's able to get to the end and not penalised by the game for that one. So Prentice now behind Pacina. I think Prentice needs to finish. Top goal penalty, that's King, he's still not pitied yet. I think Prentice, if he finishes seventh, guarantees the championship. I think that's right. If Prentice finishes seventh, one, two, three, four, five, six, he'll only lose six points to Diabrio. Diabrio wins. He's about to move into P6 as he pulls alongside Pasina and he's got Steve Caruana in front of him who's been struggling for most of the race this evening. So I think the championship's going to go Prentice's way, but stranger things have happened, so do stay tuned. We'll see what goes on as Carolina loses the rear on the way through Rivazza 1 and gets punished into Rivazza 2. He's definitely tucked into them side though, and the way Carolina has been driving, he definitely does not want to give this position up. He's we driving angry after the situation earlier on this evening. He's on the racing line, Prentice on the inside 
Prentice has to concede into the Tamar River chicane. However, the back end off Carolina is a little bit sketchy. He sticks to the racing line. He's going to give Prentice the inside. But Carolina has been doing this for a long time. He knows how to drive and retains that position. Good driving from these two Ferrari drivers. Jack King now serving that penalty, he needs to get it slowed down, he doesn't again, he will be disqualified. So he's not in the pits from 16th, he's going to be really struggling. Hutchinson shown as retired in the pits as well. Prentice now is on the N6, that will secure him at the championship. I'm sure he doesn't know that though, looking by the way he's driving, he wants that fifth place from Steve. Somebody go and tell him quickly. But if he stays there, he's won the championship. Dyer's doing everything he can in his power. They're up front to try and stop him, but might not be enough. It's out of his hands, I think. This is where the action is at, at least at the moment, with 11 minutes off the race and remaining. As King just clears his stop goal penalty, he's a lap down on this group. At least, looks like he's rejoining behind the rest of the cars who took a penalty as well. Car number 85 is shown him off the track. It's just in front of this group here. That is Dibio. Dibio's been off and lost a position. That's Tullock has went through and taken third off the Bentley driver. So a mistake from Dibio has seen him down into fourth. And now, if, as it stands, Prentice only needs to finish in P11 to take that championship. That's a 10 point swing, so. Yeah, only the top, so only Tullock, the Sherpa. Prentice, Dibriel and Luke Prentice. Both Prentices can win the championship this evening. Officer, I think, just lapping some traffic here. The gap's closed to five seconds. I think he's having to navigate some traffic in these conditions. This race, this rain is here to stay for the remainder of the race. It's not going to change as the McLaren gets out of the way for the race leader. You're always just a little bit nervous though as you approach the pack to lap them. You're not quite sure just where and how they're going to let you pass. But he gets through there with absolutely no problem whatsoever. So Austell is on a charge, you know, a rampage this evening. Again, I've lost my controls. Keyboard problems. So, Austell, only a couple of tenths behind Pasina and really kind of pressuring him. Around this section, this twisty section, there's not really an overtaking move to be had there. Austell is not a rookie, he knows his stuff. And knows you can't kind of go two by two around there. Trying to still be held up by Carolina. Tucked up behind. Spanish Steve. Car number eight is shown as off track. That's the Dihev. He's facing the wrong way. Where is that? That's just after the Villeneuve chicane before Toza. 
a little bit of damage maybe he's been in the wall so he's now behind Paul Trotman he's running P16 so quite a healthy, ga healthy gap for self from time behind so 7 minutes and 43 seconds off the off season still to go car 269 Car 269 is now shown as being in the wall. That's Sproston. Sproston's been very wide there at the chicane. Don't know exactly what's happened. It's Caldwell now runs past him. So that's Sproston down into P14 in his Mercedes. Ostal gets himself alongside into Toza. And makes the move stick. That's a clean move by the veteran Finn. Hostel up into P7. Next up the road for next challenge for Priscilla is the mid green baby. Popasol's now cleared the traffic and the thing is the person in second always seems to get a slightly better time than the person in first the person in first comes along and wakes up all the runners and go, you know they kind of aren't really expecting to be lapped so it's a bit like oh oh there's somebody there working up them past and then they realise the leaders are coming through to lap them and they're a lot more a lot more, what's the word, a lot more willing I guess, yeah willing, I don't know, I couldn't think of the word willing, a lot more willing to get out of the way. So that might play in Sweden's hand, the race is not quite over yet. Prentice has got past Piscina and next up, that is Jack, that's not, sorry, that is Chris Gedman, I think there. Uh, behind the BMW driver. So here's a battle developing. Paul Trotman and Matthew Sproster. Yellow flags showing for Masherpa down at Tamborello. He's been off track. Sharp's got some company there as well. Car 65, that's Hullock. Hullock just getting past in the taser. Dive is going to be next up. But Caruana looks like the apprentice likes that sort of inside, off the line in between Aquaman Valley and Variante Alta. Car 18. That's Chamakov showing yellow flags down at the Villeneuve Chicane. Almost rejoins in front of Trotman. So what's happened there? Because Trotman was showing a second behind Sproston and now he's all over the back of that green Mercedes. All the way from Tulloch down to Piscina are all kind of within a second of each other. This is the battle that's really gripped me at the moment in time. This is the onboard from Trotman. He has to get out of the throttle to avoid contact to back it up Mercedes. The Mercedes just looks so much quicker in a straight line. Trotman's struggling. Trotman's off track. He needs to be careful when he's rejoining as Chomakov goes round the inside. He's going to give that position up. At least temporarily. You can really see the difference between the wet part and the dry part of the track. And Trotman hits the inside wall on the start. Finish straight. 
I don't think I've ever seen that before. Trotman giving himself some unnecessary damage, just making things a little bit harder for himself. Carolanas gained himself a small gap to Prentice and beginning to close in on the back off the Bentley in front. There's absolutely no doubt this evening that Carolanas had the pace, he's just not been able to keep it together in these horrific conditions. Austell, two minutes left to go. Can Austell hold on for another high scoring points finish? Is the time well nothing doing this time in the round? Trotman still on the back of Chomakov's. the back at the Trotman just looks like he's absolutely struggling to get the power down on the exit of every corner that car in front is just pulling away one minute and 40 seconds to go our last off season race the finale of the Italian GT championship Hosted by Formula Racing League is coming to a close. The action does not stop there. Regular season starts Thursday the 4th of April. Do not miss it. You can sign up to all three of Formula Racing League's championships. Late night Thursday, Super Sprint Sunday and Tackle Tuesday via simgrid.com. It is free of course to sign up. Please feel free to have a look and investigate there if you do want to take part in this kind of thing. As Popasol starts his final lap of the race out in front, Chomakov has got a very small gap and it's now been eroded completely as Paul Trotman moves up into P14. Coming into the final lap now, Austell has pulled out a little bit more of a cushion, a bit of breathing room from the Chasing Apprentice brother just under a second gap as it stands just now if they finish in this order next time around Luke Prentice will be the champion of La Grande Competizione Italiana King it on the back of Germain not letting it go Germain looks like he's got a chunk of understeer the side by side he's over the massive sausage curbs needs to be very cautious little love tap but door banging hard racing no lasting issue as German gets out of the way of the Lincoln and the Lexus who's still running in P10 after their various excursions throughout the day but it's been this man here Popisau in the 34 Vodaclo Vodafone McLaren Mercedes is going to take the race win double race win here at Imola into Ravazza 1 for the last time into Ravazza 2 now all he has to do is make sure he doesn't lose the rear on the curb and just put that foot down as he comes across the line now to take the win double win as Popperson crosses the line and takes the checkered flag Sweeney comes through in second place. Talek looks like he's going to take the final spot on the podium. Dibriel flashing his lights in celebration. He's done what he can this evening. P4, Caruana recovers the fifth. But Luke Prentice is the one who manages to finish the story and takes the championship on this occasion. Mike Ostal and gain another respectable P7. Jack Prentice comes home. 8th place, Piscina 9th, Glinken in that Lexus comes home in P10 Chris German doing some weaving side to side in celebration Glinken parks up at the end of the pit lane to round out the top 10 the Sherpa's going to come home in P11 and just to confirm a little further back 16th 
Serpentine 17th, Vander Wall, Sharp 18th, King 19th, Gedman 20th, the Dehev 21st, and the Teaser shown as 22nd. Caldwell takes 12th place, Sproston is going to come home and take P13 in the 269. Paul Trotman comes home in P14 and Chumakov is going to be the last person on track to cross the line. Congratulations for taking the checkered flag, everyone who did. And congratulations everyone this evening for taking part. So of course all these results are pending final stewards review. But... That said, it looks like that championship land for La Grande Competizione Italiana is going to go to Luke Prentice. He's already in the pits. Looks like he's going to take that win. It's a lap of honour for Popisol as well. He's still currently lapping around there and now takes his time to do his obligatory donuts at Valiante Alta well-deserved celebration. It's now the goal at the end of the championship for all the drivers having a bit of fun at the end. So it's been a great race. It's been great for me to watch. I hope it's been just as good for everyone who has tuned in. Thank you very much for watching. If you have enjoyed watching this this evening why not take part why not get yourself involved if you have enjoyed this kind of stream this evening remember that the hour streams also take place in regular season every Sunday and Tuesday evening I do need to make everyone aware of course that the season is about to start. I don't know what's going on with this replay here. I'll come out of that. Season starts Thursday, the 4th of April. Don't forget to take get yourself investigate on SimGrid if you do want to take part and join the Discord Formula Racing League. Sim Racing at its very best. I cannot access it. I highlight just now. So we're going to leave that at the moment. Congratulations. To Popisol for taking the double win this evening. Sween took second, Tullock third. Caruana managed to finish fifth. Dybiel done everything he can to keep the championship going, but unfortunately was not successful. And the championship swings to Luke Prentice. Dybiel second in championship, and very likely given the order, Jack Prentice, I think, third. I will wait for the official confirmation and that might go to Tullock. We managed to do well this weekend, this uh, during this event as well. Congratulations to all of our competitors, even the ones who were not racing this evening. It's been an absolute pleasure to bring this special one-off race to you. I will hopefully uh, be able to have you all tune in in the Sundays in the regular season. We will hear my dulcet tones one more time. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, take care. Good night.